Today we are going to create some beautiful light beams. Hello my friends and let's get started. So this is our end result and this is how the picture starts. It's a nice picture but it could be nicer with some light beams that we are going to create now. So I will delete this and the first thing you want to do is download a grid from the internet. Ideally someone that is transparent between the grid lines. And we will use this to figure out the perspective in our picture. So first of all, what I'm going to do is right click and rasterize because I need to use the perspective tool. And then I'm going to duplicate the layer. Okay, we can hide one of them and I will select the other one and then use down here on the left my perspective tool. And I will just connect it on the floor. You can see we have here some guide points. Uh, for example, over here is a line, so we can use that. I will drag this point out here and this point down here. And then I connect this to the corner of the wall. And I will stretch this down to the end of the picture. So we have a straight line down here. And I will also make a straight line up here one second. So like this is a bit better. Okay. And then I want to move this over, but don't connect it with this line, connect it with the line of the columns on the side. So there we go. So this is our first grid and you can see now we have a perspective grid on the ground that works for us. I will now create a second grid for the side. Oops, that was the wrong layer. Okay, second grid is over here. We will do exactly the same thing. Connect them here, find a second guide point uh, we could use maybe these elements here that should work nicely. Connect this over here and down here. And so we should have now a second grid. There we go in perspective. And this will give us an idea of where the light has to flow. So the next thing we're going to do is just to use the rectangle tool, create a rectangle of any kind of size but don't leave it completely white, make it a little bit yellow. There we go, like this, because this will help us recolor it later on. So the next thing you want to do is right click on the rectangle and then convert it to curves, that's important. Now that it's curves, you can use the note tool over here to move the edges in any way you want. I will make them a little bit transparent so we see better what I'm doing. Okay. And now the only thing we need to do is connect these points to our perspective grid. So back here I can say, for example, this would be my outer point. I will really quickly uh, disable their snapping manager. I will disable snapping so this is not in my way. So I can use these two points to say, I want the light to go here on the second line and here on the second line again. And then I can decide here from these lines, my light will start at the second line and over here will also start at the second line. You can see now I have a concept in the space, perspectively correct, that will put my light there. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is use my move tool, hold my control key and just move this over, which will duplicate the light. And then I'm just repeating the process of putting these points at the lines that I've decided before. And on the ground, try to find the middle of the window like this but on the second line. There we go. Second line here, second line there. Okay, move tool. Move it over to the next window. Where is it starting? I think it's starting here. Good. Using our notes connecting it to the ground so this is very quickly done is it no this is the right line okay a bit confused there there we go next one no tool move this down here and this helps us to work uh, correctly and fast at the same time which is really important for a good workflow there we go you can see it really pans out nicely in the space that we want to fill with the light. There we go. The next one is up here. Don't get, don't worry too much about this overlaying some architectural element because the light is going to be a little bit blown out uh, through the lens anyway. So this shouldn't matter too much. 
There we go, and now we have our last window. Okay, note tool again, move the points where we need them up here. Oops, this was wrong. This to the middle here and to the middle there. And this is our construct for the light. So now I will group all of these layers, click the upper one, hold the shift key, click the down layer. So you select all of them and then hit control G on your keyboard to create a group. And now we can go to effects, Gaussian blur and blur them so they look right to us. You can do that as much or as little as you desire. It's up to your taste. We can hide the grid now. And so now we have these light beams and you can actually stop here if you want. If you want light like this, that's okay. Um, you can also, like I said, create an adjustment down here um, for recolor. And now you could make the light any color you want and this will help you adjust it to the picture so you find the right tone and the right feeling. Um, for the picture or for the kind of image that you want to create. Now, of course, you think maybe you want to have one of these like stripes that are coming from dust and dirt or maybe stuff that's in the window or before the window. We have these kind of lights, uh, lines, uh, different kind of brightnesses and we will create this next. So let's make a new layer on top of the group and go up here to filters where it says noise and go to Perlin noise. There we go. Actually, I have to cancel this. You have to set this to black and white. It's kind of important. So set this to black and white. Again, go here, filter, noise, Perlin noise. There you go. And you want to have small specs with high contrast. So with the settings here, you can play around until you find the right setting. Don't go too big on them. Rather try to use small ones. And with the persistence, you can see from the contrast or from the density. Um, but I find like this, for example, works pretty good. Now hit apply and then go up here to filters and go to blur and go to zoom blur. And with zoom blur, you can click on the picture and decide where the zoom should be. Um, actually, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to set this to screen. So we are going to see the background or the picture in the background. This will help us go back to blur and zoom blur. And now when you click, you can decide um, where you actually want it to be. So you can really adjust it to the light situation that you have. And down here, when you move this radius, it stops at 100 pixel. Don't get confused by that. You can set any value you want just by clicking this field and enter the number. So let's set this to 150 and we can still adjust this. I think um, this is okay. Click apply. And now you see that this is of course way too much. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a mask layer, um, drag it with the mouse onto your pixel layer, and then just use a brush set to black, hardness zero, a good big size, the opacity at 100, and just paint out everything that you don't need where you don't want to have the light. And this is again up to you where you think the light should start or end. It's your artistic decision, but of course you shouldn't have light where there can't be light uh, physically. So that's kind of important. But otherwise, other than that, you can of course um, do it as you want. So let's create it like this. And of course we will hide the light a little bit more. That is too much. And you, uh, what I like to do is uh, click on opacity, reduce it maybe to 25%. And then click randomly in here so this gets a bit uneven and is not perfect because this is basically you see these light rays because of dust in the light and dust in the light or dust in the air uh, isn't uniform everywhere. So this is kind of whoops. Okay, I moved the picture over. So we can leave it like that. And now we can mix it better with the background. So one thing you can do is. Uh, create a new adjustment layer and go to levels and adjust the levels here. You will see this helps a lot to blend it with the background. 
I can do it like this. Also bring this up if you want. So you have to adjust this in the way that you feel it should look or it should be. Um, so this could be okay. And then again, we can bring in a recolor layer to um, adjust the color of this bring this a little bit down and a kind of orange seems to fit good here uh, with a low saturation or a medium saturation and of course you can reduce the opacity uh, to make the effect oh not not from the adjustment layer from all of this to make the effect less extreme and you can see now when we make the effect less extreme that our light is actually a little bit different than what I created here. So we can still go in here with the mask, use our brush and just correct this problem. That's okay. That's no biggie. One second, I will set this to 50% so we can brush this away a little bit, not completely. Actually, want it to be a little bit bigger than the light that we created in the background. There we go. So we could leave it like that and have our nice light beams coming in here, or use it without these and just have the light beams like this. And basically, this is the tutorial. And this is how you create light beams in a room. So thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, maybe subscribe. I do a new video, uh, do two videos a week. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get my file with all the layers and feedback on your work. And we can chat about topics that might interest you. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next episode. And I will use the mask tool real quick to just correct this up here. There we go. Okay, perfect. See you. Bye.